do you know that God is going to restore all of those wasted years, all of your wasted days? God is going to restore those wasted years that you said that you thought and felt are wasted years. Read Joel 2.25. God is going to restore Every wasted year that you thought you lost, God said he's there to restore it. And this is what God is going to do for you. God is going to restore those wasted years. Isn't that such good news to your ears and to your spirit, knowing that all the good you've done, it wasn't wasted? All the positive things you've done, all of the support that you possibly given to other people, and you felt like it was a waste of your time, God said no. It's not a waste of your time. The years that you thought you wasted in a situation, you thought it was just wasted. It was just all for nothing. God said, I'm going to pay you back for it. Isn't that beautiful? God said, I'm going to pay you back. Because God is a restorer. God is the restorer of the breach. God's going to pay you back. He said, every year, listen at that. Think about the days, the weeks, and the months. God said, I'm going to restore the years that the canker worm, the pommel worm, and the locust has eaten from your life. Wherever you can identify the seed eater in your life, God said, I'm coming for that place, and I'm going to restore your life in that place. Isn't that beautiful? You can get ready to be restored. You got to believe God. You got to believe God over everything, and you got to believe God over everybody, even your situation, even your circumstances. You got to believe God because the word of God is true. If God tells you he's going to restore you, you have to believe it. Now you got to fight your, with your faith. You got to fight with the soulless realm because your soulless realm will look at the things that are set before you to make you doubt what God says is true. The word of God is true. And God is going to do whatever he told you he's going to do. He's a man of his word. He's not going to renege. Can you believe that? He's not going to change his mind. He's a covenant-keeping God. God said, I'm coming in your life to restore everything that the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the locust has eaten. God said, I know what the enemy has eaten. God said, I know what the enemy has taken. And he said, I'm coming in that place to restore your life. He's coming there to restore your family. It wasn't all for nothing. To those of you who've done good deeds, to those of you who have given support where you didn't feel appreciated, where you feel undervalued and underappreciated, to those of you who have felt like that for years, to those of you who have felt like you've given the best years of your life to somebody, to those of you who feel like you've given the best years of your life to a company, to an organization, to a ministry, to whatever you've given it to. If you feel like you've given the best of you away and it was all for nothing, if you really believe in your heart that you've given the best years of your life to a person and you just didn't get out of that thing what you thought you was going to get out of it, God said it wasn't time. It wasn't time for you to get out of that thing what you thought you was going to get out of it because God has somewhere else for you to reap. You had to plan in that season. That was your planning season. It wasn't your season to reap a harvest. Not yet. At that time, it wasn't. See, we got to understand the seasons that God has us in. Just like we have natural seasons here in our physical world, in the realm of the spirit, we have seasons. And you got to identify the seasons that you're in. If you're in a hard season, if you're in a real tough season, that is your winter season. And it's not time to reap a harvest. You're going to know when it's time to reap your, reap your harvest, family. You're going to know that. Things in your life are going to spring forth quickly. This is not the season, spring. So things that begin to spring forth quickly in your life, God is telling you your harvest season is right around the corner. I want you to be encouraged today. The Holy Spirit wants to encourage your heart and your spirit. God didn't forget about you. God didn't forsake you. God is going to give you a good measure, press down, shaking together, running over blessing. He's going to cause men and women to give right back into your bosom. Whatever you gave out, don't you know God is faithful to give you more? More, God said, I'm going to give you extra. Listen at that. He's going to give you a good measure. Just like Elkanah and Penina and Hannah, when her womb was shut, he gave her more. He gave Penina more, Hannah more than Penina. 
because he loved her more. But that's not what she really wanted, did it? She wanted a son. She wanted a child. God said, I know what you want. He said, I'm going to call somebody to give you a good measure, press down, shaking together, running over, blessing. These wasted years will be no more. God is coming to restore all the wasted years. You think about that for a minute. You just literally sit somewhere in solitude and solace to think of the, the years. You think about the time you've given somebody. You know, this is one thing in life that we need to value is two things, in my personal opinion. Your peace and your time. Two things in my life that I value more. That is my time and that is my peace. And you know that God is the only one that can redeem the time. For all the things that you've gone through with, God said, I'm going to do something for you. And it's going to cancel out. Listen, what God is going to do for you, you think about all the years of suffering you've had. You think about all those wasted years that you didn't get a harvest from. What God will do for you in a day is going to cancel out every year that you thought you were going to reap a harvest from. That's the kind of God that we serve. God is an abundant God. He's a loving God. He's a very merciful God. God is in your corner. God is for you. God is not against you. And don't let your circumstances, don't even let the kingdom of darkness voice reverberate in your spirit to make you believe. That God doesn't care about how you feel. That's not true. The word of God tells us that God is our high priest. He is our high priest. That means he can be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. There is nothing that you cannot get. Listen, there is nothing, absolutely nothing that you and I can go through with or face that God doesn't understand how we feel. He knows how you feel. He has been tempted in every way according to man. But God said in his word that the Lord didn't sin. These wasted years, they will never be a wasted year. There are no wasted years in God's kingdom. You didn't waste your time. It felt like it, didn't it? Because when you planted in the lives of somebody, when you planted in the life of that organization, when you planted the life, when you planted what you planted in that ministry, when you planted what you planted in that community, you didn't get back what you thought you were going to get back. It wasn't time because it wasn't your reaping season. It wasn't your harvest season. It wasn't your spring season. It wasn't your summer season. It was your wilderness season. It was your winter season. It was the time to cultivate the ground. It was time to cultivate the soil and plant a seed. At that time, God was making sure where you were planting was conducive to the seed that he was going to put in the ground because God knows the harvest that you're going to produce. You can't put a seed in the ground that God tells you to plant in and you don't get a harvest. See, the enemy hates when you plant a seed. A seed doesn't have to be finances. A seed can be your life, your talents, your gifts, your encouragement that you give somebody. You can exhort somebody. Exhortation is a gift. That's a seed that you're planting in the life of a person. The word of God is a seed. The word of God is the sperm of the Lord. And God is looking for a womb that is conducive to hold his seed. So that that seed can grow. Your wasted years, they're not wasted years. If you're saying this, I wasted my time with this person. I wasted my time with this. And I wasted my time with that. I want to encourage you not to save that family. Because God will always take the foolish things of this world to confuse those who are wise, wise people. He will always do that. And know that God is always in your corner. It wasn't wasted. It just wasn't time yet. It just wasn't your season to reap. It was your season to learn. It was your season to plant. It was your season to cultivate. It was your season to be purged. It was your season to discover more about yourself than you ever knew. It was your season to discover and get closer to God. That's what God wanted. You know, sometimes we are up on the mountaintop in life, so to speak, and we just neglect to pray. But sometimes God has to send a strong storm, a strong wind in our lives to get us back on our knees because sometimes people don't pray unless they get in trouble. Sometimes God doesn't hear from some of his children until we get in trouble. So we have to learn 
to keep that prayer life of God open daily. Pray daily. I want to encourage you to pray daily. And I want to encourage all of you to think on the things that are above. Think on things that are positive, that are good. Think on those things that are holy and just and of a good report. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You didn't have wasted years. It just wasn't time for you to reap a harvest. God said, don't be deceived. He said, I'll never be mocked. Whatever you sow, that shall you reap. You planted the seed. So God said, in divine timing. He said, I can give you some assurance. Isn't that something that you're going to reap a harvest? God said, in divine timing, I'm going to give you divine assurance. I'm going to assure you that you're going to reap a harvest. Thank you all for tuning in to the broadcast today of You Are Enough. Don't forget to watch those pre-recorded lives and those pre-recorded videos for me. Like our videos because it helps me get in front of people who've never heard of these words of encouragement from the Lord. And thank all of you for jumping over to my Instagram and Nikki G. McCray. Team Nikki G, I love you. Thank all of, all of you for what you do daily. All of you, Team Nikki G, all of my subscribers. Those of you who are watching who are not yet subscribed, join our team here and continue to pray for us. I'm praying for you. Keep your head up. Look up and live. And just know that no weapon that form against you shall so prosper. And according to Romans 8, 28, listen. Listen at this. God said all things work together for the good of those, those who love God according to his purpose. All things don't work together for the good of anybody. He said those who are called according to his purpose. He said the bad will work together for your good. It behooves us to keep that connection with God open. It behooves us to draw closer to God. And it behooves us as his children to keep forgiveness in our heart. Pray for your enemies, family of God. Pray for our country and pray for our nation. Let's keep peace. Let's don't bash people. Let's just pray for people. Let's not look down on anybody unless we're extending our hand to lift that person up. Somebody's day was today. How do we know our day won't be tomorrow? This is why we love everybody. And this is why we help where we can. Because we have to be like Christ. Because we are of his fold. And how will the world know that we belong to God? How will the world distinguish us between the world and God's kingdom? By the love that you and I have for one another. When people see how you love, they know you belong to God. When people see how you have been hated and persecuted. When people see how you've been violated, when people see how you have been manipulated and deceived and you still can pray and love your enemies, they know you belong to God without a shadow of a doubt. And they know you're filled with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. This is your divine assurance that God is going to restore all of your wasted years. Nothing is wasted in your life. Not even your tears have been wasted. Not even the pain that you've had to endure has been wasted. Not one night you didn't sleep has been wasted. Not one cry has been wasted. Not one day that you had to walk your hall all night long because you were so vexed and grieving your spirit. You didn't know how a way would be made. God said, I'm coming in that place. Trust God. You can trust him. Hang in there with God. Be patient and work your faith while you're waiting because the word of God works. Hey, family of God, you just got to work it. 